Hello, I'm Amy Blaylock. Welcome to City Hall this week. The Durham Police Department's Operation Bullseye is continuing to see great success for Northeast Central Durham and the city overall. The department shared the results of the sixth year of the program on October 10th, offering a glimpse at some of the work that has been done in what was once one of Durham's most challenging neighborhoods. Six years ago, we committed to Northeast Central Durham, specifically the Bullseye area, based upon crime data and citizen complaints to reduce violent crime in that community. I am proud to report that after six years, violent gun crime is down 46%. The initiative's two square mile focus area also includes the East Durham Children's Initiative area and much of District 1. This is an area that makes up about 2% of the city, but as of 2007, accounted for almost 20% of violent gun crimes, shots fired calls, and confirmed gang members in Durham. Between 2006 and 2007, 130 violent gun crimes were reported in the Operation Bullseye area, a number that has decreased dramatically since then. At the end of the year six, we had 100 total violent gun crimes in the Bullseye area. The department also wanted to focus on quality of life issues such as drug activity, prostitution and shots fired. Significant reductions in the number of calls for service from residents have been seen in those areas as well. For shots fired calls, we've seen a 53% decline, for drug calls a 42% decline and for prostitution calls a 61% decline. The success of Operation Bullseye has also had a positive effect overall on crime in District 1, which covers Eastern Durham. Having a 23% overall reduction in violent crime, a 9% overall reduction in property crime, for a total reduction of 11% over this time last year. Operation Bullseye is a collaborative effort between the Durham Police Department, other law enforcement agencies, city and county departments, area schools, faith leaders, and members of the community. The Durham Performing Arts Center is getting yet another round of applause for its financial performance in 2013. The city owns the facility, which is managed by PFM Niederlander. The center generated a net income of a little more than $3.3 million in 2013, with 40% or about $1.3 million being distributed to the city. The income will be used for debt service, maintenance, building improvements, and other possible revenue shortfalls. Meantime, the operation of the Durham Performing Arts Center has received another clean bill of health. The committee responsible for overseeing the center presented its annual report to the City Council on October 10th. The report shows that there were no areas of non-compliance regarding operations of the center from July of 2012 to June of 2013. For more information, visit dpacknc.com. The City Council is now considering the results and recommendations of a traffic separation study conducted to evaluate traffic patterns and road use at 18 public rail crossings in Durham. The goal of the study was to assess existing conditions and to determine what changes are needed to improve rail crossing safety. The rail crossings that were evaluated are located along the North Carolina Railroad corridor from Neal Road East to East Cornwallis Road and at Chapel Hill and Roxborough Streets. The report recommends a series of crossing improvements that are separated into three categories. Near-term improvements can be made in two to five years, mid-term improvements can be made in five to seven years, and long-term improvements need more than seven years to complete. The near and midterm alternatives consist of pavement markings, warning signs, signal upgrades, lighting, bridge maintenance, asphalt and sidewalk improvements, access management, and traffic median barriers. Some of those improvements have already been made and planning for the others is already taking place. The long-term improvements include grade separation, grade closing, and pedestrian underpass projects. Because these improvements are so complex and expensive, a ranking system will determine which ones are studied further. Hardcore outdoor enthusiasts and families alike now have a reason to celebrate in Durham. Find out why when City Hall This Week continues. Are you throwing away unused and expired drugs? Stop! Don't throw them away in the trash can, flush them down the toilet, or pour them down the sink. Doing so could cause accidental poisonings, abuse, and harm to our environment. Statistics have shown that dozens of prescription and over-the-counter drugs have been found in the drinking water of an estimated 46 million Americans. Properly disposing of unwanted medication is simple and easy. 
Just drop them off in the lobby of the Durham Police Department headquarters at 505 West Chapel Hill Street. We've installed a permanent medicine drop box where you can throw away unwanted medications 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The permanent drop box is easy and convenient and you remain anonymous. So what are you waiting for? We'll dispose of the medicines in a safe and non-hazardous manner and you'll be keeping Durham a little safer. Welcome back. The city is pursuing a partnership with Durham County, the city of Raleigh and the state to protect 134 acres of the Falls Lake watershed in Durham County. This effort is centered on protecting several sensitive stream areas within the Falls Lake watershed. The areas surrounding the streams are listed as priorities for protection because of their ability to help offset nutrient levels and biological impairments affecting the Falls Lake water supply. About 30 acres of the site will be available for development as a community park in the future. The bulk of the property will be designated as open space. The city will pay $250,000 toward the purchase of this property, which is located off of Southview Road, to protect this portion of the watershed as long as the county agrees to pay $200,000 toward the purchase. The city of Raleigh and the state will also contribute toward the funding of the property. And finally, the city of Durham is celebrating a milestone, the completion of the American Tobacco Trail into Chatham County and the near completion of the pedestrian bridge over I-40. It's my honor to be your master of ceremony today and to welcome all of you to ce our celebration for the completion of the American Tobacco Trail mm -hmm. and of the special people that made it happen. All right. A celebration was held on October 12th to mark the near completion of the $11 million project. This new 4.2 mile section extends the trail from its current endpoint on Highway 54 at Fayetteville Road all the way to the Chatham County line. And we can now use the American Tobacco Trail from the streets at South Point to Wake County and from I-40 to downtown Durham. And thanks to the completion of the trail from the North Carolina Highway 54 southward to the Chatham County line. While the celebration was initially planned as a ribbon cutting for the bridge opening, the completion of the 270 foot long pedestrian bridge is now delayed until December because of concerns with the safety fence. The bridge is located just west of Fayetteville Road and the connection to the trail heading south is located in the parking lot near South Point Cinemas. Once this bridge is completed, the missing link of this important transportation corridor will be filled and trail users will have improved access and connectivity not only from the heart of Durham, but to communities as far away as Florida and Maine. While Congressman David Price was not able to attend the ceremony in person, a letter commending the city for its dedication to the completion of the project was read on his behalf. In conjunction with the North-South Greenway, which will run from the Eno River through downtown Durham, the American Tobacco Trail will form the spine for a number of trails to connect neighborhoods throughout the community. State Transportation Secretary Tony Tata also attended the celebration, saying the completion of the project is an example of what a community can do when it rallies behind such a significant project and is able to maintain that support. On behalf of our governor, uh, let me just uh, congratulate all of you for a great accomplishment as uh, you, you've brought this together and you've made it a reality. Uh, every citizen has uh, chipped in and uh, I congratulate you. So thank you very much for your teamwork and I applaud you. That does it for City Hall this week. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And you can find us on demand on DTV8's webpage and on YouTube. I'm Amy Blaylock. Thank you for joining us.